Okay, so you're taking the high set, and you might be asking yourself, can you really pass this test and specifically the math section? So that's what this video is about, and we're going to help you understand why it's so important that the way you answer this question to yourself is really going to affect uh, the outcome of not only how well you do on the high set, you know, in other areas of your life as well. Uh, before we get started, um, we're going to obviously talk about this um, uh, in some detail. But if you are struggling with high set math, uh, there's a link in the description of this video, um, and I have a special high set math course. You might want to be interested in taking a look at that. But that's for later. Let's get into this now. All right. So, can you really pass the exam? All right. Now, before I get into this. I do a lot of work on uh, my background. I'm a math teacher. I've been uh, doing it for many, many years. But I've also worked with a, a lot of adult uh, adults who have to take <clears throat> um, the GED, high set task, a lot of other um, high school equivalency exams. Those are the big ones that are out there. And I used to do, um, I still continue to do a lot of work with the GED. But as you probably know if you are interested in passing the high set a lot of states are are basically shifting their high school equivalency to um, the high set exam or the task exam and sometimes you have different choices essentially though they're pretty much uh, generally equivalent to one another they're all high school equivalency exams um, so for the most part they're going to be uh, basically covering the same material which is like high school mathematics and that's what we're going to be talking about the math section uh, of this test so anyways uh, with that being said can you really pass the exam well let me ask you this question, okay, before we even get into this further. Have you thought in any way uh, like the following, okay? And tell me if this kind of sounds familiar. Boy, I messed up in school. Uh, I'm, I wasn't that smart, so that's why I dropped out. Or I'm struggling in life now because really I wasn't smart enough to get through school, Um Look at my rest of my um, friends and and coworkers and people I know who I see on Facebook. They're doing so much better because they were smarter than me. They actually went to high school. They went to college. They're they're better than me in some way. I'll never make it because really, you know, I should just be happy with this job I have right now and just kind of get used to making minimum wage because really that's. Wow, all I'm capable of doing it because nobody in my family, you know, got their high school diploma, et cetera, et cetera. So these are some pretty rough things that I'm saying. But I can tell you right now, the person, if you're watching this video and you have, you know, something went wrong, obviously, in your education for you to be looking at getting the high set. Um, and that's unfortunate for you, you know, uh, some, your education got discontinued. You know, you had to leave high school early, something happened Well, now you need to go back and get your high school equivalency. Okay. So that's a fairly traumatic event in a lot of people's lives. And when it comes with a lot of stigma, uh, and affects people's thinking in a very negative way, and that is the number one uh, barrier to success on these exams. If you, um, uh, watch a lot of my videos on my YouTube channel. I speak heavily on this. And the reason why I focus on people's mental state is because it's the number one area that's preventing from people to pass the, uh, passing the exam, like the high set. Okay. People who have a lot of self doubt, a lot of negative thinking patterns about themselves, you know, it's like they're going to continue to fail. Right. So, when you, you know, with all that being said, now ask yourself, can you really pass the high set math exam? Let me answer the question for you. The answer is a resounding yes, absolutely you can. I don't care if you can't do fractions or basic arithmetic. I mean, literally, unless you have a significant, severe learning disorder, okay? Um, and even then, I'm not so sure that I would even... Uh, say you couldn't pass, okay? For 99% of the people out there, especially if you made it uh, through high school, you know, or maybe left school somewhere during your high school years, you can absolutely pass. But you have to believe 
in that, okay? And you probably didn't have maybe the support system. I'm not saying you didn't have good teachers or, or, or bad teachers or, or whatever your environment was like, but it's what you were listening to, okay? You probably didn't care about school. Or maybe you did. I don't know. But right now, you're probably telling yourself a story that's not so supportive in your ability to pass the exam because it's, it's intimidating, you know? You're like, well, I don't know. I'm going to have to learn algebra. That's a lot of stuff I don't get. I hate that in school. I'm going to have to learn geometry, and that's a lot of stuff, you know, and I don't, you know, it's complicated. It's scary. I have variables and positive and negative numbers, and I was terrible at it in school then, so I'll be even worse at it now because it's been so many years. Do you see the story that I'm telling you? I bet you, <laughs> and I don't even know who you are on the other end of this video, that this is, you know, you're probably shaking your head up and down going, yeah, this guy understands me because it's so, so common. It is absolutely so common. So you're not alone. The majority of people, you know, that are, um, you know, either have a GED or even when they pass these exams, carry a lot, a lot of self-doubt and it's, it's normal. But that, but because it's normal and because it's common, doesn't mean it's good for you. <laughs> you know what else is normal? The standard American diet, eating fast food. That's normal for people. You know, the junk TV and things like that. All this is normal in society. Doesn't mean that it's good for you. So just because you know it's common and it's normal, or maybe you know a lot of people who are you know struggling in school, etc. Don't think that that is a good thing. You you need to start changing, okay? Now, I can tell you right now for sure that if you don't have your high school equivalency, your high set, uh, uh, for example, you haven't passed the high set, you absolutely need to pass. It is essential for your for your future, your, maybe your job right now. I get emails, uh, social media uh, posts, etc. I get a lot of people reaching out to me and tell me just, crazy stories about why they needed to pass the high set exam or the GED or the task. And, and stories are like, Hey, uh, my job just came out with a new policy that if I don't pass within a week or something, I'm going to lose my job. I mean, it's just countless crazy stuff that goes on in people's lives. So what you want to do is you want to get this taken care of because even though you may, you might not be in a pressured situation where you absolutely need your high set um, your high school equivalency in this moment of time, I can assure you that going forward in your life, there's going to become a period of time where you're going to need it. And now you're going to be get, you're going to be, you know, put on the spot to, Hey, where's your high school equivalency? Did you graduate high school, et cetera, et cetera. The, it, it's, it's just, our society is going in this direction. So you want to start working on this. Now, the high set, you know, it does have a considerable amount of algebra and geometry. It really is. If you think about it, you know, it's a high school equivalency. What's What happened in high school, right? Let's just recall. You have ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade, right? So people who, who got a high school diploma, you know, a lot of people just kind of skated through. But let's just say the average student, they went through ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade. Now, generally speaking... In ninth grade, that's a full year of algebra for most people. In 10th grade, it's a full full year of geometry. We're talking like nine, 10 months of school. But in most schools, districts, okay, you, you have to continue to take uh, math. So the next course is algebra two, okay? And then usually in a 12th grade, uh, it's generally uh, not required for a lot of school districts or states, but Definitely people have taken, a, you know, they got their high school diploma in a traditional sense, have gone through three full years of math. Now, whether they learned anything or retained anything, they've had to pass the course. OK, now let's assume that they, you know, actually put some effort into it and passed. That's they still had to show a lot of skill. A lot of people forget that, you know, what they learned, et cetera, because once they have you know, their diploma, if they don't need it for, you know, they're not going to college, then they just kind of move forward in life. But they put in the work. So don't look at a young person that's going to high school and be like, well, they're not putting in the work. They're just cheating the system. Well, no, that's not necessarily true. Okay. You know, in order to pass a class, unless you really do have a teacher who's just kind of blowing off, uh, 
the the students and like let anyone pass. But that's really not as common as a lot of people think. And be like, oh well, yeah, people don't get through. No, really, the majority of students have to do their homework. They have to study. They have to pass a test, etc. So this is work. All right, along with all the other um, things you got to learn in high school. So it is four years of education. So why would you think that that you know like well. Uh, it should be kind of like something I, I should be able to just, you know, do in a couple weeks. So a lot of people think, well, I can't pass because really what they're saying to themselves is I can't pass because I can't, I can't learn all this in a month or two. I mean, it's, it's not logical because if, if that's the case, if, you know, if I'm going to test a person that's never take all, never learned all this material in a month or two, no, I may have some doubts whether they can actually pass the exam after only like a month or two of preparation, right? So you have to start adjusting your expectations uh, to yourself, right? So really the question should be, can you pass if you put in the effort? If you start changing your thinking, if you start focusing, if you start uh, creating uh, good habits in your life, then the question is absolutely 1,000% yes, absolutely, okay? And I've seen story beyond story beyond story. You know, you, you, in my position, and I wish I could share, um, you know, the things that I've seen because it's just, it already. I already kind of knew this as a teacher that the most important part of teaching and, and learning, okay, really learning is your mental state of mind. OK, and if you are not in a good mental state, if you don't have self-confidence, if you're not thinking about things in a correct manner, you know, you're going to struggle. And this is the great advantage you have as an adult, because think about it, when you're in, in, in these ages, right, 15, 16, 17, 18 years, you're completely distracted. You're not that mature for sure. You got all kinds of other stuff, social stuff going on. You might have a lot of family stuff going on, environment. I, mean, I can tell you from my own personal self, I wasn't in, that interested in school. I didn't go to college right after school. I went in the, into the Marine Corps, <laughs> which was a far better education than, than college would have been, you know, uh, right after school. And when I went to school, I went to school on a full scholarship uh, because I became a, later on became a military officer. I used to see a lot of smart kids that would go start university I went to a top-notch university. I saw a lot of top kids coming right out of high school, right into university. They were too immature. They didn't know how to handle the freedom, et cetera, and they failed out because they didn't have that maturity. So you, on the other hand, even if you're 19, 20, you've been in a workforce for a year or two, you have a great advantage um, over somebody maybe who's you know 17, 18 years old. Okay, Not, not that if you're that age, you can't pass, but really – you're you have uh, that maturity about you. you have that seriousness uh, about you, which is a critical. Okay, so the question is this: Can you really pass? You absolutely can. Are you going to have to you know invest time and effort? Are you going to have to stop watching your favorite reality TV show? Are you going to have to stop hanging out with your friends so much? So well, that's up to you. Okay, it's up to you whether you're going to make the high set a priority in your life. Okay. So the choice is yours, whether you can pass or not. The choice is yours. It's always been yours, right? But you need to understand the only thing that's preventing you from success is you. So get a hold of yourself, your mind, your goals, start restructuring your life differently, and you're going to just be astounded how quickly you actually can pass. Um, now, I generally like to tell people when they're, you know, starting off, depending on what their level is, their current level of math, whether they actually know, know some math right now or they're a quick learner or how much time they have to dedicate to studying, you could probably, you know, there are people that pass the high set exam, you know, with, a, you know, I've seen it even as a few, a matter of a few weeks, but that's the far exception. But these people already probably had some good academic retention, some skills, et cetera. But, you know, I would give yourself, you know, a number of months, you know, maybe two months, three, four months to, you know, uh, is a reasonable timeline. If you're putting in the effort and studying, you know, every day, putting in the time, 
you can you can really grow your math skills tremendously. So if you're interested in learning from me, check out my high set uh, accelerator course. I have the link in the description of this video. But whether you check that course out or not, the biggest takeaway I want you to get from this video, and I'm putting this out there to help you on the other end of this, is that you're not alone. You know, you're yeah, in terms of your self doubt. And by the way, we all have it. It's a human thing. And you know, that's the number one thing we all have to be, including myself and anyone, six, you know, relative successful. As you start gaining success in your life, you start having bigger goals. And with those, you have bigger challenges. And then guess what? It rises up a lot of self doubt. So, totally normal. Don't freak out about it, but do something about it, and you're going to see uh, success just roar uh, your way. So I do a ton of uh, videos um, on high set, math, uh, high set, task, uh, GED, etc., math in general, a lot of stuff. So if you join us, please consider uh, subscribing. Hit that uh, notification bell so you can get my uh, latest videos, and maybe consider giving a thumbs up if you liked it, and comment. I I do try to read. I get a lot of comments on my videos, which I'm grateful for, so I try to read as many as I can. It's tough for me to respond um, clearly with just so many comments, but I do uh, try to read, and if you have a special request, you know, um, uh, definitely uh, let me know, and I'll try to make a video um, to answer your question. And then again, uh, my high set uh, math course. If you're interested in checking that out, um, the link is in uh, the description of the video. But thanks for your time. Have a great day. Never give up. And you absolutely can pass the high set. Have a great day. Bye-bye.